guys so i'm back with a little bit of coffee action let me know if you'd want to see more in detail how i make more coffee but i grind my beans by hand but i just wanted to put a disclaimer out to begin with uh this video is obviously i feel like it's obvious but you still gotta say that this is just my like personal testimony or one of my like personal testimonies um, if you see me looking down, of course, you know, I'm looking at my notebook. I'm sharing this because I know that it could um, encourage someone um, and to that person that they should know that they're not alone. So I'm going to quote a lot from a YouTube video that I saw. I will put the video link in the description, but I'm going to be talking about it because ultimately I fully believe that that video um, popping up this one day and, you know, while I was in this season um, was fully God in his sovereignty sending me something uh you know, intentionally that would um, bring me back to him. So for context, cause I realized I never actually talked about my um, walk with God, my testimony, um, you know, my spiritual walk in a general sense on my channel. I've been a believer and actively walking with the Lord for about six or seven years now. I started kind of in high school, started taking initiative um, with my faith and pursuing the Lord for myself. I got baptized in high school, but it's when I got to college that my faith really started to build. Um, and Or I should say, I really started to um, pursue God more by reading the Bible. You know, I started to gain more biblical, theological, if you will, knowledge. You know, I started feeding myself more with the word and learning more about what it meant to become a Christian, even though it was something I was familiar with. Um, I wasn't raised in the church or anything. So I feel like that was my first real, you know, around that time was my first real kind of beginning of my walk with the Lord. But with this um, newfound kind of, you know, habit of um, pursuing God and studying the word, with that came a really kind of continuous deep study and wrestle with the word. Now, I wish I could say this wasn't the case, but I realized, kind of only recently I realized this about myself, but I realized that in a lot of ways, I'm a very skeptical and kind of scientific minded person. I have a scientific brain or mindset. And in a lot of ways, I actually feel like that has served me well since I've been um, walking with God. I feel like it has allowed me to identify certain things such as like false teaching, right? Like I feel like I'm, I don't know, kind of just tend to have a very discerning eye because ultimately, right? Like what comes with being skeptical is like, you're very keen to, um, you know, when things aren't the truth, if you will. I don't know what other way, for lack of a better term, I feel like I have a very discerning eye when it comes to people and the things that I hear. And another way to put that is kind of, I think I'm less inclined to be fooled by signs and wonders. Like I don't tend to err on things that look cool, but I'm very skeptical of the things that I see. So one way that that's, I feel like, kind of something that I appreciate about myself is that I feel like I'm less inclined to be drawn into something by, you know, like by means of sign or wonder um, by someone who isn't necessarily you know with christ or someone who isn't demonstrating the true marks of a christian as the bible would say or bearing fruit that part of me has also i think just contributed to in a general sense like my knowledge like all the things that i've learned since being um you know like on my walk since actively pursuing god because i'm always asking and searching for answers to really big questions however of course um there is a however <laughs> on the flip side of this coin it hasn't really served my walk in a lot of ways i went ahead and finished grinding my coffee beans kind of off camera because i didn't know if the noise would be bothersome but on the flip side this hasn't served my walk because that distrust like that same distrust that i was kind of explaining that i have towards people um i often also have towards god as you can imagine this has led to like some really serious kind of turmoil or uh, mental and emotional kind of wrestling uh along my walk with god but recently it kind of came to the worst culmination unfortunately that it has ever been at and this is low-key what i'm describing this period where um i was in this space kind of happened a couple of months ago now so it's so weird to talk about now that i feel like i'm in a good place but Anyway, I think kind of just as a result of being tired um, from like life circumstances, i.e. being busy, I work really long hours. Um, at the beginning of this year, we were traveling a lot and grieving. My husband um, was has been grieving. We lost family members recently. Healing from my own recent familial trauma. On top of the constant mental energy and stress I kind of put towards trying to grapple with life or Bible questions that I don't understand. Between all of that, I had kind of reached a point of frustration with God and this was kind of towards the end of 2023. And that unfortunately led me being really close to walking away. Um, again, this is something that is like 
crazy even to think about right now because um, I mean if you're a believer I assume that you just understand how crazy that thought would be like you know we come to God and he's our everything now so to walk away seems like what like how but I just got to a really bad place and I started asking questions that I had never asked since I had actually you know like been walking with the Lord um so it was scary for me too like I started entertaining questions like well what if I just stop praying um and what if you know what if I kind of go silent? What if I don't do this? What if I don't do that? Will God actually do this? You know, will he actually reach out, pursue me? Kind of had um, like a mini, if you will, deconstruction. So I was in that space for a while, guys. I kind of just like halted everything. Um, before that, prior to that, right? I had a regular prayer life. Um, was regularly, for the most part, getting in the word. Um, and of course, like I was like here, I was always present, trying to aim to like be in God's presence. Um, being in Christian community, all the things. But that kind of just brought everything to a halt and it was hard. Like I was kind of in this like limbo, standstill kind of headspace, um, which doesn't feel good. I would say like within what ended up being like the last couple weeks of that season, um, I finally kind of opened up about it. And I had kind of opened myself up to conversation with, you know, some of the um, other believers in my life, but I think it was still, I was still hardened. I don't know, I was still very frustrated. I still kind of felt like, if you will really, I guess getting to the root of it, abandoned, right? Like we want answers from God, we cry out to God. And when we feel like he doesn't give us what we're needing in that moment, um, we feel hurt, right? But there was um, a time, again, like a couple weeks before I ended up coming back to the Lord, there was a time when I opened up to a couple of people and I think through that I had begun to get encouraged to pray. Now again, just keep in mind I had like stopped doing things all together so it might not seem like that big of a deal but um, that was taking a lot of energy for me. Um, I was what honestly like in hindsight looking back I might have even been a little bit depressed but that took a lot of energy to get to a point where I was like okay you know just wise counsel, you know, the believers who are in my community, they had advised me, hey, I understand like this is really hard and I get it. Like you're really frustrated about things, but if there's nothing else that you can do, you know what I'm saying? Like I was advised to just try and talk to God, you know, just pray. Even if it's God, I don't feel like doing this right now. This is really hard. I got a lot of emotions towards you, but I'm still reaching out. I'm still seeking um, your hand in my life. I'm still opening the door um, to what you can do. So I started to kind of finally pray again and it wasn't um, a lot more like, you know, one little quick prayer at night that felt like at the time all that I can do was doing that. And I was saying things like, you know, asking God to help me and help my faith, grow my faith and reveal himself to me, seek me out, etc., cetera, et cetera. And I think that I can say now, right? I'm with a smile. <laughs> I think that God rewarded my pleas, man. So not too long after, maybe I would say even like two to three days after I started back like saying quick prayers at night. Not too long after that, maybe like the third or fourth night, I was laying in bed, uh, kind of scrolling on YouTube like I normally do. Um, because if you know, you know, if you know me, I haven't been on social media, I don't have it. And so my late night scrolling be on YouTube, watching YouTube videos. So I was scrolling on my like YouTube, uh, like timeline or feed, if you will, and a video popped up. Now, if you know anything about content, you know that algorithms work a certain way. <laughs> I feel like that's common knowledge now. So this in particular video, it was random for it to pop up because A, I hadn't been watching Christian content. I had been in this like headspace that I've been in, right? This uh, kind of like straying from God for I think of, like a couple of months at this point, like no more than two, maybe a little bit less. And so I, I hadn't been watching Christian content up until this point. I hadn't really seen any like anything like this, any Christian videos, none of that. It was random because of that aspect, but then B, the video was old. So if you say don't frequent a certain topic on YouTube, maybe the only way you get a random video is if something is new and popping off and going viral. But this video was neither new, nor was it aligned with the content that I was getting recommended, you know, in a general sense at that time in any way. So I was like, okay, it seems weird for me to get recommended a, a, a you know, video about faith. But then on top of that, the specific topic of the video um, within the realm of Christianity um, was leaving the faith. And I'll go ahead and like say it so that it all makes sense. But it was um, Jackie Hill Perry and Preston's podcast video. Um, and it was titled, When Friends Leave the Faith. So of course I'm like, 
<laughs> I was like, that's an interesting video suggestion. But that of course made my like spiritual like ears perk up like, okay, God, is this from you? Like, are you trying to do something here? And of course that title, you know, about like friends leaving the faith was stand out really relevant to me what i'm going through questioning like questioning abandoning my faith because i still don't consider myself having really done it at that point you know you kind of just you know you want god to reach out to you so bad you're just seeking him and you feel you feel all the feelings you know but i leaned into that i was like you know this this is extremely relevant i gotta i gotta watch it so i clicked it watched it all the way through even though it was super late um at that point in the night it was super late but i watched it all the way through and of course I was moved to tears. It was definitely like one of those, okay, Lord, you see me moments, you know? Not only did I feel seen, but I kind of, I felt validated, you know, in how I was feeling. Um, Cause I think, you know, sometimes they're not one and the same. Sometimes you don't just want somebody to say, I see you, but you want to know that what you're feeling is actually valid. And, um, it, you know, feeling the way that you do about whatever it is that has frustrated you, you know, like it makes sense, you know? Yeah, I really, I feel like they put things into words perfectly, which of course, God, you know, was using them in that moment. But definitely struggling or not struggling, I like subtly plug, like recommend you watch that video. Because even if you're not struggling, um, as you might've like heard by the title, it's called When Friends Leave the Faith. So it's also for people um, who, you know, aren't necessarily in that space, but might be around people who are, or it might could in the future come across people who are. And as believers, we need to know how to walk alongside people when they're feeling that way. That's not something that comes naturally, <laughs> I feel like, uh, to us Christians. Jackie had help. Mm, I said Jackie had help. Jackie Hill Perry had said, actually, she mentioned how like, Paul uses rhetorical devices all the time to um, convey the message and the message of love and the gospel to people. And how us, I think, you know, a lot of times we can lack just the art of persuasion in general. And so one powerful thing she said was, what if the method isn't to just like abuse people? Um, and I'm quoting, I'm directly quoting. She said, what if the method isn't to just abuse people with the text, but to say, hey, like, man, how are you doing today? You know, or is there anything you need from me? Or, you know, like anything like that. And if you really think about it, as simple as words those are, that's actually really profound because what people tend to do Though those might seem like just like simple phrases, that's actually really profound because a lot of times what can happen, what people tend to do is just like they start spewing scripture. Um, and that's, you know, that like the scriptures that they're giving you might be needed, but also is it the most effective way to draw someone in when they are leaving and frustrated and hurt? Preston had said um, that we kind of can like, when we realize, you know, that someone's living the faith, when we hear about it, when they tell us, that we can fall into this kind of um, habit of overthinking and all of a sudden not treating somebody like they're a human made in the image of God. I was like, that's really good because people do that and you all of a sudden are getting attacked and people are just assuming um, that they know whether or not you were in Christ in the first place. They were saying how the best thing that we can do um, upon finding out that, you know, someone is leaving the faith is, especially someone close to us, is make sure that we remain an open door, which doesn't happen by condemning them, you know, or like harshly confronting them or what was it, like we would say, like attacking them or by acting as if, again, you're God and you know, like who, you know, was with him in the beginning, because that's the kind of things that people say. A lot of people will say they must have never been truly saved to begin with, or, you know, like they clearly wasn't like a Christian from jump, you know, like people say stuff like that. Um, when you encounter trials in your walk, if you're um, being transparent about where you're at with God. I'm sorry for all the background noise, guys. I'm trying to have a moment here, um, but living in the city. <laughs> now there's the flip side of this too, though, which says that like, and Jackie started to talk about this, but there's the flip side of how, even if you try your hardest, you know, you do everything right per se to remain an open door. You're as compassionate as you can be. Um, but that person, you know, or those people, whoever, like leaving the faith or aren't in the faith, they still won't want to come around you. They still will be, feel some type of way because simply, simply because of the fact that truth is offensive to them. Um, if you represent God, if you represent truth, right, just like, you know, how it is with people who we would consider to be in the world, you don't have to even say anything. The way that you live is going to be offensive to them or going to make them uncomfortable. It's the same phenomenon. It's the same phenomena as like, you know, first coming to the front faith. Goodness. It's the same phenomena. Phenomena? Okay. <laughs> it's the same phenomena. <laughs> 
as when you like first come to the faith, right? And everybody talks about, you know, kind of that mass migration of friend groups that you have, because um, when you start to change your life, obviously, you know, people who aren't on that same wave, they won't want to be with you no more. But as the person, right, who was considering walking away, I had to keep that in mind. I had to open myself to those, that, um, that environment. I had to keep myself open to what God might be trying to say. Um, and, you know, just keep myself open to community because those are the people, which I already kind of knew. I knew that no good would come up out of like, you know, closing the door completely to any and all wise counsel and all of my Christian community. What they really end up getting into is that like many people, especially now in our culture, because there's a culture of deconstruction happening, many people will say, right, that they aren't with God or that they left God because of a doctrine. And believers around them will try to bring them back to God by using that, by arguing doctrine, right, or scripture. But one thing that I feel like we struggle with as a body um, is looking beneath what that person had, like, you know, kind of like beneath the surface level of what they've said about why they left, right? Because that explanation, right, is often something like, I don't like this part of the Bible, or the Trinity doesn't make sense to me, or if God exists, then why did the ancient Egyptians do X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 blah. Questions about doctrine, right? <laughs> or theology. And while, yes, we need to obviously like talk about those things and evangelize with strong doctrine, the question is, can we also see that like beneath all of that, behind everything that they're arguing, saying, um, is hurt, church hurt, trauma, exhaustion, suffering. Can we speak to that? We've seen the church fight trauma um, with just doctrine and it hasn't worked. That is part of what has contributed to deconstruction is people um, being preached at per se and not empathized with um, when they're trying to communicate something that they're feeling. It's when Christians start to say, hey, I understand how you're feeling and there's a place for your trauma here. Or I hear you and you're not alone and that absolutely shouldn't have happened to you and God is weeping with you. He feels your pain too. Or, this is a big one, I don't know the answer to that question and I don't know why God allowed this to happen to you and I don't know why the Bible says that, but I can assure you this, God loves you. And I would love to walk with you. I would love to take some time and show you why I believe that. Love is all that that is, empathy and love. I think it's in 1 Corinthians um, where scripture talks about how you could have gifts, right? Gifts of the spirit, um, knowledge, all of these things, all these good things, right, that God gave us. However, he says, if you could have all these things, of which I possess many, in, in Paul's words, um, I think that was Paul who wrote that. But anyway, he talks about how you can have all these things, all this knowledge, all of these outward expressions of your faith. But if you don't have love, what is it worth? Mic drop. <laughs> so yeah guys um a lot of times like as jackie hill perry also proceeded to say i also kind of just want to leave y'all with how hard it is to obey god you know and i'm not saying you know that like the overarching like theme or feeling of being a christian is hardship um what i'm saying is like if we're keeping it in a book and like you know talking about what it feels like to walk this walk you're gonna face some suffering you're probably gonna face some tribulation um, it is hard. It's hard to obey God and it's hard to live in this world. But get around some people who can encourage you with the truths that are biblically true, right? Versus like outside of how we're feeling in the moment, which are valid because we experience things. We're human and we feel ways about them. That is um, just, that's how God made us. However, God's word is an objective truth that can be hard to hear. Like it can be hard to get that from here to here sometimes when we're going through it. And so, um, yeah, of course, like get in the word if you have the strength to, but you also like surround yourself with people who would encourage you to go to God, who can encourage you to pray, who can intercede right on your behalf um, when you feel like you might not have it in you. And thank God for those people. Um, I thank God for those people in my life because we need that. Like we're not meant to walk this walk alone. So one place that I hope that you can find that is here. <laughs> if you know, you know, I try to cultivate a, um, spirit of community on my channel um, so if you're down with that if you like thought-provoking relatable content um, subscribe if you haven't you should already be but subscribe if you haven't I didn't end up making any coffee at all um, but that's okay because it's actually the middle of the day I was supposed to record this in the morning but that just didn't happen I hope you guys were encouraged don't be shy leave a comment if you have thoughts or if you could relate have a good rest of your day wherever you are and I will uh, see you guys next week love y'all Bye. <laughs>